Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webcast, Adapt or Die, the Evolution of Endpoint Security. I'm Kate Carson, Marketing Events Specialist here at Tripwire, and I'm excited to be part of the presentation today. Uh, before we start, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. First, make sure that your audio is streaming correctly. Please note that the audio portion will stream through your PC or laptop speakers. Be sure to check your speaker volume, the volume setting on your computer, and your headset to ensure that it is turned on and volume is at an audible level. Today's webcast is presented using a slide deck. You can click on the expand rectangle on the top right corner of the slide area to enlarge. If you're not seeing the slide movement in your console, you can try refreshing your browser. If you're experiencing any kind of technical difficulty, please click on the Help widget. It is the question mark icon on your console and covers most common technical issues. If you have a question during the present presentation for one of the presenters, click on the Q&A widget and submit your question, and we will have a Q&A session at the end. And lastly, I'll be sending out a link to the on-demand version of this webcast and a link to the slides. You may also earn a CPE credit for attending today. So now let's get on with the presentation. Our speakers today are Eric Ogren, Senior Security Analyst at 451 Group, and Gajraj Singh, VP of Product Marketing at Tripwire. Eric Ogren has extensive experience in software development, technology marketing, and as a security industry analyst. Gajraj Singh is an accomplished marketing and product executive with extensive experience in various leadership positions, including marketing, product management, and profit center management. So now, without further delay, I'll turn it over to Eric Ogren to start the presentation. Take it away, Eric. Oh, terrific. Thanks so much, Kate. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to, to you all out there. Uh, this is Eric Ogren, and uh, you know, that's a young picture of me, so... You know, I've, I've done a lot of things, just but just sort of add on 15 years of, of security experience, and uh, you, it comes a little closer to, to what I look like today. Uh, I thought I would spend about 10 minutes looking at security from my point of view as, as an analyst at, at, at 451. And in general, what we're going to talk about, and, and Gajraj and I will be, be very um, conversational as we go, uh, is just how endpoint security is evolving, but also end up with you know, some recommendations on um, things for you to do and how you should be examining your, your endpoint security profile. Um, so with that, yeah, just for the next 10 minutes or so, you know, you know, I'll go through and give you a bit of my perspective of what I'm seeing in the marketplace. Um, you know, I do have endpoint security experience as a, on a vendor side. I was, I, I was a founding member of one of the host intrusion prevention players, which I thought was a pretty cool behavioral approach. And uh, behavior approach is still you know, near and dear to my heart at 451. So what we see here is actually comes from our uh, mergers and acquisition knowledge database. And, and it's actually kind of, I thought kind of interesting, 451 tracks deals. And we're probably you know, one of the better analyst firms at, uh, at keeping our finger on the pulse of deals that are going on. And there were 134 uh, security mergers and acquisitions just last year alone. And, uh, and this year is moving along at at at, at a good pace, you know, and that's pretty a pretty stunning uptick. And it's not all explainable by you know, a crummy IPO market, uh, although that's certainly part of it. It's it's what we're seeing is that you know the security puzzle still remains unsolved, and you know so many large companies have holes in their product lines. Um, enterprises want to be able to protect their endpoints. And it's becoming more and more clear that a lot of the things they're trying just aren't working. And so the larger vendors say, say we need some new technologies, and Shazam, an acquisition, takes place and, and it gets plugged in. And endpoints tend to uh, tend to get big, um, and they tend to be comprehensive. Uh, but and it's just a never-ending cycle. So there's a huge interest in new approaches for endpoint security. And, that, and that's actually what well, I'm pleased to be working with, with Gajras today to be able to talk about that. Um, and that's, this chart here shows some of it. It's not a VC chart, chart so it's not showing investments. It's, it's more of people acquiring technologies that, that, that they need in their portfolio. Um, I will be talking about a few slides that we've done. And this one is, is a simple one. I won't spend much time on it because we all have endpoint security. This shows uh, 84 and a half percent of respondents. It just touches us all. 
Uh, the main things we, we do in this Voice of the Enterprise is, is a quarterly survey. Uh, there, there will be a few more that I will share with you. And so we'll have the question on the left of what we're asking, and then you know, the samples are in the bar graphs of, of, of what we're getting for responses. And as you can see, the N here is, I think, is 910. Um, pretty large, statistically significant uh, responses. Uh, so it's, it's all the good stuff. And, and some of the things that we look at, and just to give you an idea, you know, it's always, it's always you know, fun. I was a math major, so it's always cool to look at data and then think, you know, what does this really mean? And in this case, we, we asked you know, security technicians and, and, and professionals, um, you know, what's, what do they want to cover? Well, you know, what's inadequate cover? What do they wish they could do more of? And, and that's highlighted above it. it is, and you can, you can read it for yourself. But basically, it comes down to detection. <laughs> it, really, it really does. It's, you know, the one thing about prevention is if an attack gets picked off um, by the endpoint security or blocked somewhere, most security professionals don't really see it. I mean, it just tends to happen. Uh, so everybody wishes they could detect more uh, insider threats. Um, and, and actually, when I say insider threats, that I really mean something that's penetrated the, the perimeter here. It's, it's in your network. It is perhaps using um, you know, stolen credentials. It, it's traversing the network east-west already. Um, it's, it's evaded a lot of the signature pattern matching type of defenses and, and you know, is, is raising havoc and just waiting to be able to find some data that it can grab and then send out. Um, and it, it all intertwines with us, cyber warfare, hackers or crackers. Uh, we all, you know, security is here. We want to keep our endpoints clean and pristine. We want to keep the business safe. And, and, and we all wish we could do more of it. But it's been a bit, actually, you know, a pretty fundamental change in our approach uh, to security. And the biggest thing is obviously, you know, compliance you know, is muscling in. And, and I, I wish, actually, I wish I could have done this as a, as a build picture for you. It would have been, would have been fun. But I, we spent so much time as security practitioners looking at the prevention. You know, you know, the picture I have is it was, it was standing on this cliff looking out and we're trying to figure out every attack, every exploit and, and, and software toolkits that it used for them and, and how do we really go through all the list of threats and then figure out which ones we want to prevent, which ones we don't. And, and the, the funny thing is before compliance is if we would miss, you know, just think about this, we're the only security, industry, we're the only industry out there that would, when our product fails, we just shrug our shoulders, say we tried, and pass it over to IT to do correction. You know, they say, "Sorry, you know, we missed your attack. Me image, <laughs> or or catch." Because on the left is prevention; it's a huge part of our security budget, um, and on the right is correction, which tends to be, like you said, it's re-imaging, patching. It tends to be an IT function. And many, I've talked to a lot of organizations that's not even part of security. You know, I I ask them how they're patching, how they're correcting, and meet and ensuring the integrity of the systems, they, they just try to say, well, that's, uh, that's not us, which kind of blows me away, but, but there you go. Uh, but compliance has come in, and, and it's actually maturing and maturing pretty nicely, and this is one of the themes that I wanted to share with you as we talk about how endpoint security is, is evolving. I mean, it started out as, compliance started out as buy a lot of stuff, you know, audit it, obey the mandates, report it, and it was just this like endless task of, of audit reports. But really what it's maturing into is, is keeping security aligned with the business. It's, it's actually, when you think about it, making it even stronger. How do we detect attacks, and then how do we fix it, and then how do we learn so we get better? So at some point, you know, I really see compliance shifting into you know, driving security to a, a, like, kind of like a diagnostic and fix model, where it's let's look at configurations, let's look at how our business is running and maintain that. And then, and then deal with the threats once we recognize them. Almost like a doctor's office, if you think about it. You know, the, if you go to the doctor, they, they don't stick you with needles and thermometers right away. They, you know, they ask you behavioral things like, okay, how are you feeling? What, you know, what, they look at your color. They, they do basic stuff. And then they get more diagnostic. And, and that, I think, is going to be a fundamental shift in endpoint security. It might take us a few years to get there, but that's, uh, that's where we're heading. So in the same vein, and this is this is recent data actually from our voice of the enterprise. It's I think Q3 2015, so it's, it's pretty recent. 
Um, when we ask them, you know, top concerns, you know, obviously hackers and crackers are number one. But I was totally impressed with the next five tend to be compliance oriented. But again, if you think about it, it's you know, is this thing differently? You know, why are we showing this? It's detection. You know, my best position to to detect and respond to the business needs. You know, these aren't activities that are outward bound, looking for threats, looking for, you know for, for the prevention angle. You know, we're just out of balance there. Uh, so we're starting to see a shift back towards uh, protecting the business, and it's a, it's a very very basic shift. It's a very powerful shift. Um, some of the technologies, and you know, we're not, we're not really talking, you know, how to manage configurations, how to isolate things. You know, these are kinds of approaches where you don't have to spend a lot of time with threat feeds and trying to figure out the nuances of every threat. And I think many of you are here today because, I mean, you don't want to be experts on on threat feeds and all this stuff. Um, just, I went to look at a question there, and let me get back to where I. Here we go. And I love this. I love this slide. I was just trying to figure out a way to to make it work in uh, in, 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 in this adapt or, or die um, you know webinar. But I think at the end of the day, you know, the endpoint security winners are going to be aligned with business. You know, it's going to be you know endpoints are not always connected. You know, people bring laptops home, they bring them back to the network, they plug them in. But I, I just you know maybe it's just me. I found this fascinating. We asked vendors and users the same questions and charted the differences. And it absolutely blew me away because, you know, on the vendor side, we're all about out-of-the-box experience or UBI kind of stuff. We're, we're about reporting and usability. And, and the customers basically say, you know, we, we'll make it work if you do the job. We need performance. We need you to, to offer the security. But we also need you, and, and this is impressive, it's really the absence of vendor responses for prevention, for supporting mission-critical processes, um, integrating with other products, working in the background. I mean, it just seems common sense to you folks because most of you are, are on the enterprise, on the user side. Um, but it's just stunning to me that it's not on the vendor responses. It doesn't even show up. So it's uh, – and that's huge. So I think the endpoint security of the future absolutely has to be aware of the business first. Um, and it kind of goes with what I was saying earlier is we spent a lot of time looking at – uh, prevention, looking at threats, but just think of, just imagine if, what if you just start looking at configurations, looking at the behavior of of your of your endpoints, being able to detect drifts from that are abnormal, and this is kind of really what behavior analytics is about, which I've been spending my time on lately. Um, that's probably a good place to start, and then you can go down a brute force through what the threat looks like if you see something and, and clean it up. I mean, really, a threat detection and the signature of pattern matching is much better used for uh, automating cleanup than anything else. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to give you an idea of how I look at things. We, you know, For me, it's a combination of survey results. I talk to many vendors, uh, most vendors, actually, and, and I spend a lot of time talking to CSOs and balancing off what their needs and requirements are. And I, I tend to triangulate those points of view and, and coming up with my opinions. And it, uh, it's, it's never dull. I'll, 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 I'll share that with you. So I thank you for that. And, and now let me turn it over to Gaj Raj, who's going to, going to take us through the, the next, next 10, 15 minutes of our, of our webinar here. Thank you, Eric. Uh, that, was, that was very insightful and appreciate you know, some of the uh, recent COVID data that you have shared. Uh, and again, uh, thanks everybody for for being on this uh, on this webinar. We're really excited uh, about you know a number of you uh, who have joined, and you know even a larger number who actually signed up. And we're really looking forward to a, a, a good interaction here. So uh, you know, on a trip by side, customers buy from us for three basic you know need areas: security, IT compliance, and IT operations, and you know, they include. A half of Fortune 500, many of you are our current customers and over 9,000 customers worldwide. So a common theme that we see across all of those customers is, you know, a rapid digital transformation and new business model uh, evolving, new business models evolving, which are bringing in really sweeping IT changes. And with it, uh, many more new endpoints, applications, and how those are connecting into, into their networks. And as IT and OT converge, uh, connecting physical and digital assets in, in today's modern organizations. Uh, safety has to become an integral part of, uh, of the security uh, framework. 
IT pros are focused on the left-hand side, you know, essentially yeah, business agility for enabling higher growth, uh, competitiveness, uh, better efficiency all across the business functions, and enabling a better customer experience. But on the other hand, security pros, uh, they're, for, they're gearing for better visibility and control uh, with a more adaptive and responsive security as we go into the future. Uh, but you know, together, uh, both of them need to make sure that the organization is cyber resilient and at the same time business agile in this new, new digital uh, business era. And you know, at the same time, we know that you know, cyber resilience has become a bigger challenge than it has ever been. Right? Uh, we're, in a, uh, we're in a battle with cyber criminals. And the unfortunate reality is that threats are just evolving and escalating so fast that we find it very hard uh, across both IT and security pros to keep up with them. You know, some of the statistics I share here uh, you may have already heard about, but you know, 390,000 malicious programs you know, coming through every day uh, as per avtest.org. Uh, legacy malware you know, solutions which are signature-based are kind of like falling behind. It's simply not effective. And on a cumulated basis, we now have over 450 million malware. Uh, I mean, just think about that number, right? And, and you know, on the business side, we've seen the impact, you know, of undetected breaches, right? Uh, not just the initial loss of data and damage to the brand and the cost, but also, you know, the fines and, uh, you know, the, the loss of stock value, even that. So, uh, you know, Center for Strategic uh, Studies, uh, strategic, sorry, strategic and international studies uh, estimated, you know, the uh, the financial losses on an annual basis to be, you know, upward of 445 billion dollars a year, uh, and you know, rightfully so. Now the C-level executives and board of directors, you know, many of you and uh, you know, yeah, people that you 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 are responsible for, uh, board of directors are now being held accountable for the losses resulting from cyber attacks. So it's no more, you know, just IT pros and security pros. You know, the, the boards are getting involved. They, they have a stake in this. And they are looking for a new strategy to effectively respond to this, you know, fast emerging and escalating uh, danger to their business. So if we turn over to the, to the endpoint side, you know, uh, Eric talked about the, the endpoint becoming, you know, even more important than it has been in the past. So we appreciate, and I think we, all of you will agree, that you know, effective information security is a multi-layer defense strategy uh, with the goal of cyber resilience, as I talked about earlier. But it's important to recognize that the endpoint really is the target of cyber attacks. And at the same time, the classic definition of endpoint, something with which a user interacts, such as a desktop, laptop, or a, or a tablet, or a phone, is, is not sufficient for developing a comprehensive security strategy. It must expand. Uh, it must expand to include employee devices, virtual machines, uh, point of sale terminals, IoT, and so on. But also, uh, critical endpoints such as internet facing servers, uh, financial trading systems, uh, SCADA systems, uh, payment processing, and national defense and POS infrastructure, all of those are also at risk. And that's where you know, the, 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 the cyber criminals are focused on. Uh, why? Because any any of these gets compromised, uh, they, it can cause substantial financial or operational loss to your organization. So in short, our position is that anything that can be a target of an attack or even a conduit to a device that can be attacked must be included in the definition of endpoint and coordinated an endpoint defense. We need to defend and protect, like I'm saying here, every endpoint in our organization. So how do we improve uh, how do we improve our endpoint security program? You know, three areas that we want to focus on today and uh, you know share with you uh, based on you know the technology research that we're seeing, the development innovation that we're seeing, but also some of the best practices that we are observing in our in our customer uh, in the install base and how they're using the latest technology to to you know, protect themselves better. Uh, fall in these three categories. You know, first of all, of course, you know, be proactive, uh, nail the basics, you know, get ahead of that curve. Uh, and then focus on detection for uh, you know, continuous threat visibility, expose the threats uh, as fast as you can uh, so that the dwell time is, is limited. 
uh, be responsive so you can contain the losses and quickly restore trust and remediate the, uh, the affected endpoints in case of an actual breach. So let's talk about being proactive. You know, this is something that you want to focus on before you even think about investing and spending your resources in more sophisticated detection and response technologies that we'll talk about in a, in a moment. Uh, make sure you have the basic control, security controls in place. And what do I mean by that? Uh, you all heard of this probably. Uh, you can only protect what you know about. And that 85% of breaches could be prevented by simply remediating known vulnerabilities. And let's not forget system misconfiguration, another major source of breaches. So let's take care of those first, right? And then if you look at endpoint security, it's not just about hardening and protecting the endpoint, putting a prevention system in place. It needs to include discovery, automated discovery, uh, if you would, monitoring and assessing on a continuous basis to proactively reduce the attack surface. That's key. Uh, use the threat, vulnerability, and intelligence data to better analyze and respond to attacks that do get through the defenses, and they will, right? We all know that. We need to know what's the risk profile of our endpoints and monitor what's happening at those endpoints. So uh, why is that important? Uh, so that when security incidents or breaches happen, we're able to detect them quickly and respond to them. At this point, actually, I have a question for you, Eric, uh, if you don't mind. I want to get your perspective on this as you talk to your clients uh, you know, we think it feels obvious that we do need to do the basics first. But in your opinion, Eric, uh, shouldn't more organizations focus on the foundation controls before spending resources changing the latest technology? Yeah, it's actually, I, I love this slide. It's one of my it's, it's, number seventeen is my favorite, but this one this one's right next to it. Gosh, it's you know the basics set up everything else. I mean, if you you just absolutely have to know what endpoints are. I mean, most most customers don't even know, and I, I see this all the time. You know, servers or, or endpoint software is, is more appropriate for this conversation. Most that, most customers don't even know what's on their network. I mean, they think they do, and then when they actually go and examine, you know, what's on on different people's machines, they're, they're just completely completely blown away with with what software is on there. You know, you know, one of the questions that came in was about, you know, insiders and users. And, you know, and, you know, this is from Stephen, and I think the question, really the thing is with, with users, it's, you know, they might install software that as security professionals or IT professionals, we don't want to get in the way. We don't always want to be the, the force of, of, no, you can't do this. We have policies. Um, you know, there were some organizations, but generally not. But it's usually, you know, are those creating um, security issues? Are they creating holes where you know attacks might come in that security teams don't even know about uh, so, so this and this I think that's just a perfect example of nailing the basics it's just not just discover endpoints but continually discover you know what software's out there what's the OS what's the inventory look like um, really monitor what's out there in the environment because you know business shifts people change business changes um, and, it, and from security teams, we've got to stay on top of all of that. We just otherwise we'll we'll go crazy just just running around behind it. So, a bit long-winded answer for you, gosh, Raj, but yeah, definitely. This is um, nailing the basics. Is yeah. if you if if you don't do that, you know, there's very little else that's, that's going to help you. Yeah, and, and spe especially you know, as, as 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 the rapid transformation is happening, you know, that I talked about earlier, there is going to be always new endpoints. There is always going to be changes. You know, software keeps changing. We, new patches yeah. keep getting applied. New versions are happening. And how do you, you know, how do you protect them if you don't even know what you have? And you know, when I say get ahead of the hackers, guess what? That they're they're looking at what's changing. So they're looking at the latest patches and the failures of those and, and vulnerabilities. So if you're not on that ball, they are, and they'll get they'll get in before you you find out. Uh, yeah, it just, it, just, it, just, it just seems intuitive, doesn't it? Well, you know, if you don't know what's out yeah. there, how can you possibly secure it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Next, I want to talk about detection. And, you know, and this is you know, kind of the core of the new technology, you know, uh, battlefield where there's a lot of innovation happening. And I'll talk about some of this here uh, on Tripwire side. So, you know, first of all, uh, we need real-time detection technology uh, that can monitor not just the endpoints but their state. And we focus on that. You know, as the state changes, we want to know what's happening. Right? These state changes might relate to installed software, 
you know, files on the file system, registry, you know, some of the common things, but also some of the latest, you know, things as processes, right? Activities and any object change. We are essentially looking at all of those, right? At, at every endpoint that we want to protect. And, and I assert again, we want to protect every endpoint. So your, your endpoint threat detection system, uh, you know, whatever you choose to deploy, uh, must leverage multiple threat detection you know, methods, as I listed here. IOC detection, if you compare system state, you know, changes to internal IOCs, and, and if you don't have an IOC that matches there, you may want to say, you know, we want to have a threat intelligence service uh, that you can set it to, a sand, you know, malware sandboxing service that you can set it to. And those must integrate with your detect detection system, right? So it shouldn't be that manual effort, it should be automated. Uh, anomaly detection, uh, to detect changes in the system from known good base configuration. You must have a good baseline, and you know, if there's an anomaly uh, in terms of what's happening there, you know, you want to catch that quickly. Uh, behavior detection, you know, one of the, uh, you know, audience said, you know, signature is not enough. I totally agree. And that's why, you know, you need to look at anomaly, you need to look at behavior. And, and even policy violation, you know, simple things that may appear simple initially can lead you to an early, you know, way of detecting some dangerous stuff that could be coming in, right? So the basic question is, can we identify all threats or breaches, right? You, you want to be able to get there. It's all about visibility of potential threats, right? You want to find out before they become the, the threat, actually a threat or the breach really plays itself out. You're hunting for signs or, you know, evidence of any emerging or existing breach. Uh, hopefully before a significant you know, damage or loss occurs. Uh, also, can we confirm and validate the attack or breach? Uh, example, you know, what I mentioned here as threat intelligence feeds. In, you know, you want this in an integrated uh, fashion and automated manner so that when your system detects, you know, certain anomalous activities based on any of those detection, uh, you know, methods, you have a way of validating and confirming what that actual, you know, attack was. You know, if it's a malware or any other, you know, form, you can find that out and get confirmation. Because once you get confirmation, then you are confident about how to respond to that, right? So, you know, one of the questions that I want to, you know, again, you know, bring in, bring in Eric's perspective here is, uh, how can organizations reduce, you know, the detection gap uh, that, you know, everybody in the industry talks about so that they can reduce the, the time cyber criminals uh, go undetected? <laughs> uh, the... Uh... You give me all the you give me all the softball questions, gosh. No, this is a hard one. <laughs> but thank you for this. Oh. Um, <laughs> well, well, the big thing is, I've been doing behavior analytics for for quite a while, and I'm and I'm, I'm really, you know, pretty big on it. Is because an, once an attack penetrates the network, I mean, it, it evades an AV product or evades the you know IDSs or next gen firewalls, whatever whatever you want to want to put out there. You know, no one's going to look at it anymore because you know it's just this, it's a race to keep up. So once the attack is in, it just goes undiscovered for like forever until usually, as I think the stats say, it, it takes a business partner or someone on the outside to call up and say, "Hey, you know, my performance is terrible, or what are you doing? You know, why is my data popping up here?" And and then all of a sudden, you know, nine months down the road, you know, security teams say, hey, "We got a problem. Go fi go figure out what happened." And, and that's a really really hard issue. Um, what did you say nine months? Like it? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Did, did you say nine months? Oh, I, I, I just didn't, didn't quite get you. I'm sorry. No, no, sorry. I was, I was saying you say, I heard you say nine. It takes nine months that the that the you know that the attack or the breach is going undetected. That's a huge amount of time, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's and it's it's actually you know my belief. I don't have data for because you know the, I think some of the uh, the data is out there is, is two hundred. 57 days, something like that. Uh, it's it's massive, and I think it's even worse actually. I think I think there's so many threats out there that IT doesn't even know they have, and it's not until someone on the outside forces them to disclose that it, it becomes an issue. So I think it's even worse than than we know, uh, because once an attack penetrates the network, it does a, it does a few things. It it starts assuming identities, so it traverses the network. Um, as a privileged user, I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it done with security teams that RTP to remote sites, and all of a sudden, you know, an attacker has the username and password of, of a security team, and they use their own RTP tools <laughs> to move around the network, and as yeah. the most privileged users one could be, and get anything they want. And they change configurations, and you know, that's you know, attacks have to do a few things. They 
They have to persist on the machine, which means they're changing the file somewhere. Uh, they mm -hmm. have to use the network to go east-west as they, you know, they're just looking for a buffet of, of good data you know, to feed at. And they need the network to be able to deliver whatever they steal, or whatever they're looking for, um, back out, outside. So you know, they leave traces. We're just not very good at finding those traces. And the only way to do it is to see machines and, and applying peer group analysis and, and things like that to say, oh, wait a minute, this, this person's doing things that, you know, that are very unusual. They're either getting data in large chunks that they never got before or they're having conversations with websites that their peers aren't having, um, things like that. And, and so I, the behavior uh, analytics piece is something that a lot of large organizations are looking at and they're, and they're combining it with just the simple basics that we talked about, gosh, of, of nailing the basics. They're, they're combining that with the basics of let's just control the configurations, manage what we have, uh, control our access settings, and only only then worry about what the threat really was, you know, what the threat was and use the intelligence feeds to be able to go and say, okay, now let's get some more details so we can clean this out of here and make sure it doesn't come back. Yep. No, absolutely, and we, to we totally agree. You know, the reason I list, you know, policy violation, and a simple thing, you may think it's simple, but, you know, when somebody trips over, you know, a policy that you've set, it could be a sign of, you know, a, a simple insider threat. Somebody's already inside, there is no malware to detect, right? They're already in, they can remove the malware or whatever they use to get inside, and they and can stay inside. Once they're inside, they'll do something which could be a sign for you. To, to catch uh, the, the, the threat early. And it may not be malware, you know, but you know, uh, sometimes malware, and, you know, yes, you need, you know, uh, malware identification system, threat intelligence comes into play, but, you know, even, even uh, other than that, there are many other ways uh, that you can detect the uh, threat and the breach. Yeah, so, it's, it's, a hard, know, it's a hard problem because the, the person might just be doing their job and you, you don't want to hassle mm -hmm. them and get in the way of, of, of their being productive. But on the other hand, um, from a security standpoint, those are certainly indicators that, that something is amiss. Yeah, and, and you know, without without you know uh, talking too much about our products, we do have you know solutions that that can help in, in the detection area. Where we're actually making significant R and D investments in this in this space. I want to talk about the the third area, you know, uh, about responsiveness. You know, okay, you detected it. Now, how do you how do you contain it? You can, you detected the attack and confirmed and validated. You know, maybe it's a threat, maybe it's a malware. Now you need to decide how to how to respond to it, right? So the question that you're trying to answer is, you know, how do you limit the attack or you know uh, uh, the the impact of the attack or the breach? Uh, you can do that by controlling either the traffic or process, and this is you know something that you want to probably, you know, uh, address very quickly uh, without going into too much of, you know, investigation. Again, you know, Eric was talking about 200 plus days it takes to detect, but the statistics on how much time it takes to respond and resolve and, uh, you know, a breach after it has been detected is also significant. Uh, it's in the, you know, 80, 90 days, you know, so somewhere like three months, four months before, you know, it's eliminated. You want to get on it quickly. So first thing is, you know, contain the loss, right? And then you want to move on to remediation. And remediation, you know, it could be rolling back, repairing, removing, blocking. We really want to get the endpoint that's been impacted back to its pre-attack state. You know, and I talked about earlier saying you want to restore trust in your system and you want to get back, you know, in your, your uh, pre-attack operations uh, state so that your business can continue and you overcame the financial or business loss. Uh, your endpoint systems need to have mechanisms to do some of this in an automated manner uh, so that you're not depending on having to go log into the endpoint in remotely and then take control of the endpoint and do it. Uh, that's not a scalable model. You know, endpoint security systems today are capable uh, of automating a lot of this. You know, once you've figured out what it is, what the response is, uh, what the response should be based on, you know, prioritization of the asset that is impacted. So I talk about asset context, talk about threat context. You may need some threat intelligence information to really figure that out. But also what Eric was talking about, analytics, right? So and a quick analytics to, you know, do both containment and remediation. In the end, you know, once you've done that, you've, you've fixed things, 
Now you want to make sure that you do some root cause analysis. We think, uh, you know, that's, that's the fundamental thing. At the end of the day, you want to fix, you know, find the root cause and make sure that, you know, you fix it so that it doesn't, you know, relapse and you don't have the same or an associated uh, risk, you know, coming up again in your in your network or your endpoints. Uh, Ian, a uh, question for Eric, uh, you know, maybe you could talk about the balance between, you know, some of the proactive measures we, we spoke about earlier, like focusing on basics and the, the inevitable need to remediate and contain the damage and, and maybe the, the root cause analysis. Yeah, I, th- I thought the adding the time for the root cause of remediation was was huge, huge, and I was, I was glad you glad to hear you did that. Uh, you know, one of our attendees reminded me that it was, it was pointed out that I think it was 224 days to to detect an attack. Which, um, you know, I believe that number. I, but again, I still I still contend it's, I think it's actually probably worse than that. Um, but then add on to it just the complexities of, and, and I've got this in one of my slides coming up. Is actually it comes from a, a patch process of just how long it takes to remediate. And many companies don't even get there. They just look at the patch, they look at the criticality of the servers, and they, um, you know, they never get the patch completely applied. And that's why some of the attacks just go round and round. They, they, they never really, truly ever go away. Um, so examining the root cause and finding ways to prevent those relapses is, uh, is going to make your life a lot easier. Yeah, perfect. So, you know, in, in summary, you know, before I hand this over to, to Eric about to talk about, you know, some of the future, uh, you know, developments and how he sees the future of endpoint security evolving uh, from where we are today. Uh, in summary, you know, we've got to do, we've got to focus on in all of these three areas, you know, be proactive, you know, get the basics in place, uh, get your monitoring and discovery process in place because that's going to help you you know, figure out yeah, and better to do a better job of detection. And then, you know, eventually uh, you want to be able to be in control in case a security incident an incident does happen. So we want to be better prepared in case, uh, you know, that happens and quickly be able to detect and respond. Uh, in, in, in a nutshell, going back to wherever I started, uh, you can be cyber resilient if you address, uh, you know, a number of these things and these three areas. And again, uh, Tripwire has a good solution in the endpoint detection and response space. And uh, if there's interest, we'd love to have more conversations with you. So with that, I want to turn this back to Eric to talk about some of the future, uh, you know, developments on endpoint security, what that looks like. Eric, take it away. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gosh. You're, you're, you're a tough act to follow, but uh, <laughs> pretty cool. Actually, the encouraging thing is you know, we have a lot of the technologies, a lot of, a lot of the capabilities. Um, Already, it's just a matter of, of shifting our focus and our attention, and and perhaps the way we we approach endpoint security. Um, you know, one of the attendees was asking, you know, how we how we sell this to to large organizations, and you know, my answer to that is, as we talk about the future of endpoint security, something to consider is these are strategic decisions for businesses. I mean, endpoints touch every single user, so it's not something that is typically a mandate from from up above. It's going to be uh, working with the users, convincing them of the approach of what we're doing and, and why it's in their best interest. You know, one of the slide, one of the um, survey questions I had earlier about the alignment of uh, vendors and users and, and what what they need it was you know, what rated very 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 highly with users is working in the background with limited user involvement and, and being able to integrate with other products, which also implies, um, you know, working in the background without you know, users really getting involved a whole heck of a lot. So that type of approach, if you start with, with that, of how the life is going to be easier, um, will help you sell this to your user community. And, and, you know, honestly, you know, endpoint security, you have to have the users on board. And, uh, otherwise, you know, you're, in, you're just in for a, real, a really long day. Uh, part of it is the diagnostic and fix is is – Yes, so, I mean, well, you'll see on the, ne- on the next slide, prevention does not go away, and I would never recommend that. Um, but start thinking of how you just fix things, even without having to, and be able to take root cause analysis and, and be able to push do that after the remediation, after the fix is in place, because um, job one is just to get the users going. And, 
<laughs> I changed the title, uh, title on this. This is, this is a patch process, actually, from a customer who, uh, when it, it said why it takes them so long to apply a patch. They said security gets indication of a, of a fix, and this is the uh, security team in the middle. <laughs> and then they have to go through networking teams and application teams and users and, and management and communications and go through QA functions. And it, you know, everybody has their own interests. Uh, everybody has their own sets of requirements. It's a hard problem. Um, but it's it's the very essence of being able to, you know, respond and, and, and keep up to date with endpoint security is how do you automate that? How do you streamline that uh, for your users? If you nail the basics, it gets a lot easier for you because then you understand everybody has a common um, point where they, they are working from and you know exactly where you have to go to, to do the remediation. So. Nailing the basics accelerates that cycle um, and, and should make your life a lot easier. But what do you think it's going to look like? You know, where are we going with this stuff? Um, so, you know, these are a few thoughts. Actually, we could, we could spend another hour on this. this would be a, open, we should open up the lines. Uh, prevention never goes away. Uh, you know, computers are great at brute force. So as much as we like to talk about signatures this and signatures that, you know, there's nothing wrong with scanning and when something is detected, blocking it or slowing it down or redirecting it, whatever you need to do. But let's start thinking that you, you know, prevention is never, ever going to be 100%. So, so the basics are that we have configurations, we have important endpoints, uh, we have user behaviors, and we need to be able to you know, make remediations, make corrections to those defects, and be able to keep those endpoints aligned with what users in the business need, and, uh, and I tend to equate users and business because that's, that's what we are. You know, we're going to see a lot more behavior detection in analytics. It, it will be a sus sustaining category, so keep your eye on the space. There's probably about you know, maybe 40 companies in here now, believe it or not, uh, that, that are doing this. And the idea is you know, how do we catch drifts, how do we catch things that are you know, going away from where the business wants to go that might indicate an attack, indicate a threat, and, and you know, take Lisa's 224 days and drive that, that number way, way down where we can, we can detect an attack and clean up and, and prevent the damage a whole lot quicker. Uh, so we're going to see that. It's, you know, there are a lot of companies doing proof of concepts out there now. Uh, they're not quite bumping into each other, but we're going to see more and more budget allocations from security teams uh, for 2017 and the second half of 16. Uh, so, so watch this space, and I think you're going to see a lot of it at the uh, you know the security conferences that are coming up as well. I, I can just well, actually I can guarantee you that. Uh, endpoints will collaborate with network and cloud, and the collaboration is going to help automate those remediations and those responses. So, as an endpoint sees something and it applies this intelligence, um, because again. Uh, and I'll say for the last time, if you, if you nailed the basics, you're able to draw inferences because you have that, that state of reference. Uh, you can, you're in a better point now to have your endpoint automatically communicate with the network, automatically communicate with cloud applications, and re reduce the risk to the organization. So, yeah, I very much expect to see a lot more automation from endpoints. You know, endpoints come onto the network, they go off the network. Uh, they're just going to have to work as a, as a cohesive, cohesive system. And the other one I, is actually it's not even much of a prediction because I've seen it in a lot of companies. You know, right now security is about 8% of IT budgets. Um, but at the end of the day, security sees everything. And endpoint security sees everything that users are touching. So IT tends to come to security when they need information and when they need operational intelligence. You know, they can go around and try to get it themselves. But guess what? Security has got it already. <laughs> and some of you see that already. Whenever there's a security issue, they, whenever there's a performance issue, they come to the security team first and they say, hey, is there anything happening with our, with our network, with our firewalls, with our endpoint software? Um, and they come to security first because security can answer their questions. So this is already happening, and it's something I encourage all of you to keep working because it's always, you know, most security teams, we, CSOs report to the CIO anyway. Uh, so let's... Start thinking of, as you're building your own tools, doing your own things with security, um, think of the IT needs as well, and, and be sure to put in some goodies for them that, that others will appreciate. So I thank you so much. Let me pass this over to Gajros for closing comments, but I, I have enjoyed this. I hope I've given you a few things to think about. Gajros. 
you back you back back, you. back in the baddest box. Yep, I'm I'm back here uh, and really enjoying enjoying the conversation. Eric. Uh, I hope the audience is enjoying uh, it too, as you said. So you just this is more of a recap. You know, we talked about proactive, being proactive. You know, think about discovery, you know, having an inventory which is real time, as real time as you can get. And think about assessment and monitoring. These things don't need to go away. They, they need to, they're, they're, the foundation helps you do a better job on detection and response, uh, which is the second priority. And again, you know, I agree with Eric that it, detection and response or any other endpoint security technology or solution that you bring in is not isolated. It needs to be part of your security program. It needs to be part of that you know, complete framework, including which includes compliance. You know, you got to do that. You have a business to run. You're, you're, you're regulated. You have certain compliance to adhere to, uh, and we totally, you know, understand that. So the, it is about security. It is about IT compliance. It is about IT operations. All of those three need to be focused upon. I would focus on the new detection and response technology. See where that can help you do a better job of detection. So you're not the one who's got, you know, uh, hackers lingering around for 205 or 240 days. And, you know, you can do investigation analysis faster to, you know, uh, to get to a real time, uh, and as, as a quick response. And last but not the least, of course, you know, the integration and automation that you know Eric spoke about, which is you know some of it is already happening and more of it is going to come in the future, and, and you use that to collaborate you know across the teams. So that will help you not only become better at detecting and responding, but also improve the overall IT operations and agility. Uh, and you know, Tripwire focuses on this a lot. So you know, uh, to 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 add to what Eric said, what's this space? Uh, a big security conference is coming up in a, in, a, in, a, in a couple of weeks, and we're going to be making some some you know groundbreaking in, in announcements too on innovations that we're coming to bring to the market, and look forward to you know, seeing some of you there interacting with you. And with that, I also want to you know, talk about uh, as we talk about Q and A. I'm going to leave this slide on on screen. There is a new uh, book on infrared detection and response that we just finished up. Uh, we're going to be giving it away at the RSA conference, uh, but you can use this link, uh, which is up there, uh, EDR for dummies, and you can find it on our website. You can get an early uh, early sneak peek at the first chapter early, and then once the book is released, then you will you will have a full copy of the book. So then I want to shift to Q and A. Uh, I think some of the questions we have answered uh, during the course of our conversation. But I see some more have come in. Uh, so Stephen, thank you for that question. Uh, how do you see enterprise companies digesting endpoint security from a deployment perspective? Deployment at endpoint at large scale sounds like a daunting task from an IT perspective. Uh, Eric, you want to do? <laughs> so this is a, this, this is a, this is an analyst question. So I'll, I'll, I'll give it to you. <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna volunteer for Kim's question. <laughs> okay, um, it, well it, it it is it is daunting, Stephen. It, it, um, but you know that's what IT is there for. It and and you know automation certainly helps, and and there are different techniques in, in, in how to use the network and how to use you know self service stuff. You know, generally I find you know, if you if you communicated with the user community. You know, effectively about about the benefits of what you're trying to do with security and why this is important for them. If they generally support it, you know, I I tend not to find too many security. I mean, too many users fighting security that they'll do if it makes sense, and and you know, they'll they'll say, yeah, you know, sign me up and I'll I'll do my part. Uh, so that's definitely a piece of it is is having the users always invested in and even even making sure that they're along along the whole way so that they know that it. The, uh, the new IT security is effective for them. It does not get in the way, inhibit the way they do their job or the, or the way they, they live their lives. So, you know, yeah, deploying to endpoints at a large scale is a daunting task, but it's not really. But, you know, it happens all the time. I mean, it's it's really more of a daunting task from an IT perspective in, in, in administration. But, you know, if you're managing configurations, you're assuming you're going to be, you know, invaded anyway in, in intrusion. So you, you need to know what, what endpoints are on your network. You need to know what they look like. You need to know what 
they look like when they're repaired, or, you know, and, and the criticality of that, then then it gets a lot easier for you. So and there's no easy answer. There's no free lunch. Um, that's the tin staffle. There's no such thing as a free lunch, but it is something that's very doable, and organizations do it every day. Right. Ashwish, did you want to and, add? Yeah, go ahead and add a few specifics to that if you can. Yeah. So I just want to, you know, sh share that we at Tripwire, you know, totally understand this challenge. You know, the, the challenge of scaling it across, you know, so I talked about let's protect every endpoint. You know, it's, it's, it's not going to happen in a day. And, you know, both the, the you know, the, the users and the technology developers, i.e. the vendors, and the system integrators, all of them need to do their job. So when we look at it, you know, we're looking at, you know, automating and integrating as much as we can to help that process. And the idea is to, to help them scale this faster. So a lot of the technology, you know, if you, if you see this chart, you know, it's really our innovation, you know, uh, framework that we, that we look at. How do we, you know, how do we look at developing some of the latest technologies? So we look at discovery, you know, agent, agent place, remote sensing, you know, that's, that's one, one of the you know, key elements there. And then monitoring again, you know, in a way that is, you know, uh, able to look at the activity state processes and objects, right? But even more important, you know, look at the context intelligence. Once you have deployed that solution, uh, then you look at, you know, the context intelligence, and that's where the analytics and the visualization you know, comes into play. But how do we ease the deployment? And that's why, you know, it's, it, agent is a great solution, but we're also looking at how do we how do we make a better solution of that? And there is going to be an announcement at RSA conference, so watch that space. We're going to talk about this. But also agent less. You know, you need to have a good mix there. You know, see what works for you. There are some of the, you know, uh, endpoints that you, you need to have an agent present. Others you could just do, you know, without an agent. And that way you could scale and then eventually, eventually grow the footprint. Cool. Perfect. And, and I yeah. think we have uh, we have time for a couple of more questions. Uh, Kim's question is: the endpoint needs to be able to look at techniques that lead up to exploits and not just nature based. I, I think I totally agree with that, but I want Alex's perspective. <laughs> yes, well, same deal. But in in, in some sense, if, if you know, when it comes down to it, I, I think techniques means like the toolkits and basic. Uh, basic structure, not just individual attacks. But the signatures tend to be more, you know, is this coming from a tool? Is it, is it you know, they, they've also matured. Uh, I think the real point there is that, is the techniques and technical aspects of attacks change all the time. And Gajos had you know, beautiful statistics on, like, the millions of samples that are out there every day. Um, and, and that, you know, those type of people have to, those type of vendors have to make decisions as to, what they develop the antidotes for, which what they don't, and how they um, how they attack that problem. It's the same problem. It's just abstracted a bit, Kim. Um, but again, it, at some point in the nirvana is if you can control, um, you know, your environment and look at behavior, then you care a lot less about the technical aspects of an attack because you're just catching it, detecting it, you know, remediating it, and 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 moving on, and then you know. You can use the intelligence of, of what that attack really looks like, you know, down the road to, you know, if you if you have technical expertise to go for it, and and that's kind of what the compliance issue is is is, is like too. I mean, some you know, Edward says that you know some of the senior management is trying to get away from doing compliance, but you know, I see just the opposite. You know, most large companies have had compliance for years; they've been doing it for you know for a long time now, and they're driving the cost out of it. But they're also saying, hey, let's let's make this work for us. It's not a reporting thing. We're, you know, we've got that behind us. Now it's like, how do we actually control our environment and to be able to, you know, protect our business a, a bit better? You know, we have all this stuff. Let's make it work. And, uh, and that, that's a real key, key corner to turn. Anyway, I've been, I rambled on and got gouged a little bit on you. Let me, uh, let me give you a turn because we're, we're getting close to wrapping up here. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and again, you know, I talk about, you know, looking at the changes, looking at the state changes, right? And, you know, if you think about zero-day, you know, threats, if you look at emerging threats, right, there is no signatures for those, and that's why they're, they're called zero-day, right? And with some of the technologies that I refer to, we can actually help detect and, and locate a identify a zero-day threat. And, you know, we work with threat intelligence, you know, partners, uh, you know, several of the well-known names, you know, Cisco, Palo Alto Networks, 
last line to name a few. Uh, there's eight or nine that we already have, uh, you know, integrations working today. So we work with them, and sometimes we will end up, you know, giving them information that may lead to identifying a zero day, new zero day threat. And that's exactly how the technology needs to work, you know, share and collaborate and work at it so that, you know, eventually you have a better control over your endpoints versus the hackers getting in. So we've got uh, about two minutes left, and I want to draw attention in any of you interested in getting an early, you know, a, a sneak peek at the book. Uh, be sure to go to this link. And with that, I want to turn it over to Kate. Uh, and thank everybody. Thank you, Gaj Raj. Um, thank you so much for speaking today. And Eric Ogren of 451 Group, thank you very much. It was wonderful information today. And thank you, audience, for being in attendance today. As I mentioned earlier, I'll be sending out a link to the on-demand webcast and also to this great slide deck. Um, you may reply to that email if you'd like to earn a CPE credit for attending the webcast today. We hope that you'll join us for future webcasts, and you can check out our schedule on tripwire.com to find out about those, and also check out our award-winning blog, State of Security. Thank you, and have a great day.